In this video, we'll be having a look at the top 5 hottest Linux distros perfect for Windows users. These 5 distros will make your switch from Windows to Linux absolutely effortless, powerful and blazing fast. Now that Windows 10 is dead, I tested out more than a couple dozen Linux distros and I have chosen the best 5 that are laser focused on giving you a zero friction upgrade to Linux. We are talking out of the box Windows app compatibility, mind blowing performance on older hardware, a desktop that looks and feels exactly like Windows and a lot more. I know switching from Windows to Linux can be a headache. So I have compiled this list to ensure that even if you are an absolute Linux newcomer, you'll find the perfect, most familiar and fastest system to start with. I took all the guesswork out of it. Trust me, you want these. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Starting off with an absolute banger, we have Zorin OS 18 on number 5. Zorin OS has many features that make it an excellent choice for anyone coming from Windows to Linux. But the biggest one is the familiarity factor. The second you boot up, there's no confusion, no learning curve. This looks and feels exactly like Windows. You get a taskbar, a start menu style launcher, a system tray and it all works exactly like you'd expect. Zorin respects your muscle memory, so you can just start using your computer. No retraining, no friction, just get to work. And if you need to change things, you get the Zorin Appearance app here, which is a magic wand. You get multiple desktop layouts here and you can switch themes and if you have a favorite color, set it as the accent color and some bells and whistles to play around with here. Now the big anxiety for every Windows to Linux switcher is, will my apps work? That's a very valid question and Zorin OS answers this in a phenomenal way. Zorin OS comes with built-in Windows app support. Just double click on an app or game.exe file and it'll automatically set up the Windows app compatibility layer. You know, wine and stuff. No manual tinkering around. And here's the cool part. Zorin can recognize many popular app installers and recommend the best option for you. If there's a native Linux version, it offers to install that automatically. If a web app is faster and cleaner, it points you there. You know, things like Microsoft Office. But if you prefer the Windows version anyway, you can just run it. Many apps will run like this, but some complicated and complex Windows apps might not run this way. So you have to check them out online before you make the switch. You can even play many Windows games like this. Now, no other Linux distribution has support for Windows apps and games like this. Zorin wins with this. Another cool feature that Zorin OS provides is you can pair your Android phone with your PC and get desktop notifications, quickly share files wirelessly, sync your clipboard and even use your phone as a remote control for your PC. This is a big quality of life feature that makes life a little bit easier. I'm just giving you a taste of Zorin OS. There are many other features here that will make you just switch to it. Zorin OS 18 is based on Ubuntu 24.04 LTS and will be supported till 2029 and when the next version of Zorin OS comes, you will get an automatic update option. Now even if your PC does not support Windows 11, you can still upgrade to Zorin OS 18 because it's very efficient and performant. It does not have the same TPM 2.0 requirement that Windows 11 has. All you need is a dual core processor and a minimum of 2GB RAM and Zorin OS will fly. Zorin OS 18 is my personal recommendation. If you're coming from Windows and want something similar, familiar and usable right out of the box, Zorin OS is the most frictionless upgrade to Windows 10. Yeah, it's exactly that. An upgrade. On number 4, we have a very interesting Linux distribution. If you want the cutting edge tech without giving up day to day stability, Fedora Workstation hits that sweet spot. Fair warning, this is a little more technical than the rest of this list, but in return you get a clean, modern Linux that moves fast, stays reliable and feels genuinely premium to use. Let's talk interface first. Fedora ships the pure GNOME experience, stock, elegant, distraction free. It's a different workflow compared to Windows. You don't get a bottom taskbar. There's an activities overview and a super key driven workflow, you know the Windows key. But here's the thing. Once you spend a day with it, it's remarkably easy to get started and genuinely efficient. It looks gorgeous, it's thoughtfully minimal and it stays out of your way. This is a different way of interacting with your computer but once you get used to this, maybe spend a week or two and your productivity will just skyrocket. Fedora is great for developers and tech enthusiasts. You get the latest software, tools, system updates quickly but everything still works reliably. It's fast, clean and polished with everything you need to get work done without constant troubleshooting. Now there are a few things you need to keep in mind. Fedora's philosophy is strictly open source out of the box. None of that proprietary software pre-installed here. 
So you'll have to enable RPM Fusion to grab proprietary codecs, GPU drivers and a few extras. It's a 2 minute setup and I have given the commands to enable them in the description below. But it's still a step. The release cadence is about twice a year. Two new versions release every year, one in April and another in October with 13 months of support per version. When a new version releases, upgrading to it is very smooth. But you do them a bit more often than other distros on this list. Yeah, compared to something like Zorin, Fedora asks for a touch of more technical know-how. Not a lot, but a little. So this can be a pain point for absolute Linux newcomers. And if this is your first rodeo with Linux, I recommend you go with Zorin. I recommend Fedora for users who have already had a taste of Linux here and there. Not necessarily first-time Linux users. As far as performance and polish are concerned, they are just excellent. Fedora's Valen first desktop is buttery, animations feel tight, and the whole thing just breeds more on Linux. Fedora is a workhorse. This is a Linux distro for people who just want to get some work done. The thing here is, it's not a super stable distro like Zorin, and at the same time, it's not bleeding edge like Arch Linux. You get that perfect balance of newer packages, newer technologies, but it's also very well tested and confirmed stable for everyday usage. My take, if you want a cutting edge yet stable daily driver and you don't mind a slightly different UI plus 5 extra minutes of setup, Fedora Workstation is phenomenal. It's clean, current and confidently modern, built for people who like their tools sharp and ready. On number 3, we have the world's most popular Linux distribution, the king of Linux distros, Ubuntu. With Ubuntu, you get a rock solid operating system backed by the biggest community, phenomenal documentation, vendor attention and an ecosystem that covers pretty much everything you'll ever need. For Windows switchers who want a dependable landing, Ubuntu is the all-rounder that nails it. Let's start with what you actually feel on day one. Ubuntu LTS with GNOME gives you a clean, modern desktop that's easy to understand and easy to live in. The install is simple, the setup is straightforward, and once you're in, it feels polished and consistent. You're not fighting the system, you're just using your computer. Ubuntu makes some modifications to the GNOME desktop and brings this side panel, and I think this is a huge quality of life improvement and it really makes app switching, app opening just faster. Okay, let's talk app support. Now this is where Ubuntu truly flexes first class dot .dev packages, snaps in the Ubuntu App Center, and access to Flatpak only if you want it. Finding and installing software is ridiculously simple. From browsers and office suites to creative tools, dev stacks and gaming launchers, it's all here. Many big vendors like Microsoft, Google, Spotify, Nextcloud bring the software to Ubuntu in its snap format. It has its controversies, but it definitely makes life easier. And because Ubuntu is the most widely supported distro, third-party vendors support it first. Anything you want, any application, just open the App Center, search for it and install it. That's that. Ubuntu LTS versions like Ubuntu 24.04 are what's known as long-term stability versions and they are supported for 5 years. Install an LTS release and you are set for years of updates and security patches. It's a dependable daily driver for work, study and everything in between. Hardware support is excellent too. Drivers, firmwares, hybrid graphics, Wi-Fi, printers, everything just works. Gaming? Absolutely. Steam with Proton runs beautifully on Ubuntu. Thousands of Windows titles are playable with a couple of clicks and the experience keeps getting better with each generation of Kernel, Mesa and Proton updates. If you are switching and want your game library to come along, Ubuntu is a great place to be. And then there's the community. If you get stuck, chances are someone has already solved it and written a guide. Ubuntu forums, Ask Ubuntu, wikis, tutorials. This is the richest help network in desktop Linux. And it matters. Ubuntu is the complete package. It's popular for a reason, battle tested everywhere and a fantastic default for Windows users who want confidence on day one. This has been my daily driver for the past decade. So yeah, it's good. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Okay, next on the list, we have an advanced Linux distribution, but one that does not overwhelm Windows users, but empowers them to do more with Linux. Yeah, I'm talking about MX Linux. If you want something that feels familiar, runs extremely fast on older hardware, and stays rock solid for years, 
MX Linux with XFC is a fantastic pick. The desktop is classic and comfortable, a panel, a menu, a system tray, and window controls exactly where you expect them. You click the menu, launch apps, arrange windows, and get to work. It's straightforward, it's friendly, and it's easy to live in day to day. Performance is where MX shines. XFC desktop used here is light on resources, snappy to use, and stays responsive even on PCs that struggle with Windows 10. If your machine can't move to Windows 11 because of TPM or CPU requirements, MX gives it a second life. Even ancient machines will run buttery smooth with MX. Boot times are quick, the system stays lean, and you don't feel the OS getting in your way. It's the keep that old laptop going option that still feels modern when you're actually using it. Under the hood, MX is built on Debian Stable, famous for its dependability. That means consistent updates, long-term security, and a platform you can trust for years. For people who just need a computer to work every day and don't want to babysit it, that stability matters. It's especially appealing if you're switching because Windows 10 is EOL and Windows 11 doesn't support your hardware. MX lets you keep your PC in service safely and comfortably without cutting corners. And MX Linux version 25, which is the current latest release, will be supported till 2030. So that gives you ample time to continue using your old PC without having to worry about updates. Then, here's the really cool part about MX Linux, MX Tools. This curated suite of apps turns complex Linux tasks into simple point-and-click steps. Need to install drivers, snapshot your system, set up codecs, make a live USB, manage repositories. MX Tools lays it out in clear GUIs so you don't have to open the terminal for every advanced tweak. It removes friction on the exact things that typically feel foreign when you're new to Linux, and it makes you feel in control from day one. There's a lot more you can do with MX Tools here. Overall, MX Linux is a balanced, dependable starting point, especially for folks with older PCs or anyone who values a familiar desktop and long-term stability. It's slightly more Linuxy than a hand-holding distro like Zorin OS, and that's a good thing if you're curious. If you're up for a tiny bit more exploration, MX gives you speed, control, and a system that will keep running smoothly for half a decade and later on. On the number one spot in this list, we have the mighty Linux Mint, one of the most popular Linux distros and my personal favorites. If you want your first day on Linux to feel like you never left home, Linux Mint is the one. This is the safest, most familiar landing for Windows users and a rock-solid daily driver that just works. You get a classic desktop with a taskbar, start menu style launcher, system tray, and window controls exactly where your muscle memory expects them to be. There's almost zero learning curve. You sit down, click the menu, launch apps, arrange windows, and get on with your life. Mint's out-of-the-box experience is exactly how an operating system should greet you. The installer is clean and uncomplicated. Then, on the first boot up, the system guides you through things like driver installation, setting up updates, setting up backups, and does it in a way that's very beginner friendly for people who are new to Linux. By the way, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, but things like the desktop environment, you know, the UI, have been changed. There are a few other changes as well. The settings are laid out sensibly with human readable names and toggles that do exactly what they say. Cinnamon feels modern without being too flashy, elegant without being fragile. Use this for one hour and you'll get that trust feeling about Mint immediately. Performance is where Mint's choices pay off big time. Cinnamon, the user interface here, is lean, responsive, and stays smooth on modest hardware. Now, unlike MX Linux, Mint doesn't feel like it came out of 2010. This looks great too. The desktop feels snappy, app launches are quick, and everyday multitasking is effortless. If you got a solid Windows 10 era laptop you love, Mint makes it feel new again. It doesn't waste your resources on fluff. It uses them to make your computer feel fast. Now the heart of the Mint experience, software. I feel that this distro is software centric in the best way. All the essentials are ready for you to be used out of the box. Firefox browser, an office suite, various kinds of media players, it's all ready. And when you need additional software, you use the software manager here and this is just fantastic. It is well organized and curated with apps people actually use. Browsers, office suites, design tools, development stacks, media players. Search, click, install. Flatpak support is first class if you want the freshest builds, while the Ubuntu Foundation underneath gives you a massive library that's battle tested. Between the official repos and Flathub, finding what you need is straightforward and predictable. Linux Mint rips out Ubuntu's default snaps in favor of Flatpak. 
The cinnamon desktop also brings thoughtful quality of life touches. A customizable panel, applets for the little things you care about, sensible defaults for windowing and workspaces, and a theme that looks polished from login to shutdown. You can personalize it deeply or leave it stock. Either way, it feels very intentional and complete. Gaming is also absolutely doable. Fire up Steam, install your titles and play. Yeah, that's it. The software manager here also contains many free and open source games and you can play around with them as well. But yeah, today for Linux gaming, Steam is the go-to place because it allows you to play many Windows only titles on Linux Mint and any Linux distro actually. For the vast majority of everyday use, work, study, browsing, media, coding and casual gaming, Mint is a calm, confident platform that stays out of your way and lets you get things done. I think this perfectly describes Linux Mint. Mint is not one of those flashy systems that gives you this feature, that feature and stuff. You know, it gives you a very refined and stable platform. That's also user friendly and this is focused at productivity, not shiny selling features. And for most people, there is a lot of value in using something like this. Mint gets the basics right. Switching operating systems feels like a big move. I get it. You've used Windows your whole life, your hands know where everything is, and the idea of Linux sounds different. But here's the thing, this isn't a leap into the unknown anymore. Today, switching feels less like jumping off a cliff and more like stepping through an open door into a cleaner, calmer space where your computer finally works for you again. If you want the smoothest start, just start with Zorin OS. It looks right, behaves right, and it lets you get to work on day one. No wrestling, no drama, just a desktop you already understand with more speed, less noise and zero bloat. Or you can go with Ubuntu or Linux Mint, just pick one. Use it for a week. Do your browsing, your work, your media, your gaming with Steam, Proton. See how it feels. If you love it, awesome. If you want something even more different, try another one. Rinse, repeat. We even have a term for this. Distro hopping. Yeah, welcome to the world of Linux. Alright, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you are interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out my video on the top ways to supercharge your Linux desktop performance to the next level and truly unlock your system. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Tech signing out.